Hey there, are you getting frustrated because you are having trouble getting views on YouTube and you're not really sure why? You've been doing all the keyword research and all those things that you've learned. You're doing them all and it's still not working. Well, I'm gonna share with you today three mistakes that you could be making. Even if you are somewhat of an expert, not new, but you've been around a while, you still may be making one of these mistakes. I've made all three of them. <laughs> so I am gonna share them with you and my goal is to help you improve your views on YouTube. Now, before we dig in, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified every Tuesday and Friday of one of my videos so that you can watch them and help grow your YouTube channel and your affiliate marketing business. Now, you might be wondering why I'm in the barn and how, what does this have to do with keyword research? Just bear with me. I wanna share a story with you and it's all gonna to come together and then we're gonna get back inside and go over those three tips, okay? Or mistakes that you could be making. This is Lucy and she is broody. She's a hen, she's a chicken. Uh, she lays eggs and broody means that she just sits on the nest and she has a couple of eggs under her and she wants to hatch them out. So when a hen goes broody, they just sit and sit and sit on those eggs and hatch them out. And actually, for the first time last year, I actually had two hens that hatched their eggs all by themselves out here on the farm. And it, to me, was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Now you might say, well, what's the big deal? Well, this is the problem. When, you're, um, when you have several hens and they're all laying eggs, the problem is they keep wanting to get in her nest and lay. So if she gets up to go to the bathroom or goes to get a drink, something to eat, another hen will come along and lay more eggs. So my problem is, is I have to mark them so that I'll leave them there, the ones that I want her to hatch. So I'm gonna show you what I've done. Now she might not be too happy when I check them, but I didn't check them. That's okay, sweetie. Oh, she's gonna bite me. It's okay. Here, let me put my, <laughs> I'm gonna put my, my uh, cover up my hand here. Here you go. Yeah, that doesn't hurt. Oh, see, she's got four in here. Here's the problem, okay? I'm gonna take, oops. There, one just went. Um, two of them I marked on the fifth. So these are the two that I want to stay in there. You can put a black X on them. I put the date so that I know when 21 days is up. Because if this goes on for 25, 30 days, they're duds. So I'm going to cover her back up again and put them back. Now she's just being protective. She's just pecking at me. It's not a big deal. Get up, baby. There you go. We'll put them right back in there. Now... What also happens is, uh, that I've had in the last few days, is she may move to this other nest and start sitting on those eggs. So that's why it's important to, to mark them. Now, anybody that knows about chickens and um, knows about hens going broody and, and, and all that stuff and getting them fertilized and all that, if you some of you remember my video that I made just last week about the 13 raccoons. Actually, that's the title on the thumbnail. And I got complacent and I lost a whole bunch of my chickens up to 13 raccoons. And if you remember in that story, I said I lost both of my roosters. Now, anybody know how, what a rooster has to do with fertilizing eggs or any of that? Go ahead and put it in the chat right now before I share the big bombshell. <laughs> I told my husband, I go, I'm out there making sure these two eggs are under her and I keep moving them from one side to the other. You know, if she moves over here, I move the eggs back and forth because I, I want to make sure they hatch out and get those other ones out of there because there's no way she's going to hatch like 20 eggs. And I looked at him and I go, honey, we don't have a rooster. If I do, but it's a baby. It's I'm raising it. But uh, he goes, yeah. And I go, well, I've got a broody chicken out there. And I keep on marking her eggs and stuff. And he just starts laughing. You cannot hatch a chick without a rooster fertilizing the egg. So it won't happen. You don't have to have a rooster to lay an egg, but you have to have a rooster to fertilize the egg to create a chick, which is not happening. <laughs> so what is the point of all of that? Well, sometimes you do things because you don't know what you don't know. Now, I knew basically that I needed the rooster, but I wasn't paying attention. So what if I was a new farmer and I kept on putting those eggs under there for the next six months, wondering why they're not hatching? This is what happens in our business. Sometimes we do things and we're doing them wrong, but we don't know that we don't know. And I, I want you to look at not just today's session about keyword search and SEO for your videos, but think about it with everything you do. Always 
have a mindset where you want to continue to learn, always check yourself, always try to improve. I think many of us, I know especially my generation, I grew up, you know, when I finished school or I finished college, I just had that mindset that I was done. I got it, I learned it, I passed the test and I move on. And I didn't create a life for myself where I was continuously learning, not at the depth that I wish I would have if I could go back, let's put it that way. So keep learning because you're probably without realizing it doing some things wrong you because you don't know there's always things that we're doing wrong because you don't know what you don't know so let's find out if you're making these three mistakes and you can change them and don't beat yourself up over it because you did it because you thought you were doing it right that's what i did i thought all three of these mistakes i've made them and i'm sure there's more keyword tips the search tips out there that maybe i don't know yet maybe i'll come back in six months and tell you there's more but for today these are three mistakes that i made when i was brand new and just getting into keyword search and i hope that hopefully it helps somebody out there um you know on the other hand i hope most of you already know this but if i can reach one person then this was worth it right all right so let's go inside and find out what those three mistakes are that you could be making Okay, we are going to jump right in. Mistake number one. You try to figure it out. I'm gonna Google a topic that I want to make a video about, and I'm gonna just call it yoga. So I'm gonna to go to my Google search, and I'm gonna type in yoga. And this is a way that you can find out what kind of a search volume that what you're looking for has, okay? Now, you can see right here in the results, there are over a billion results. So lots of people are looking for yoga. So most of us would say, hey, that is awesome. Everybody likes yoga. I've picked a great niche, all right? So now what I want you to do before you get too excited, I want you to go over to open up another tab and I want you to go under www.youtube.com and then I want you to Google yoga under videos. See how many videos there are and what the uh, analytics look like from there. And as you can see, very, very popular. Now, this is gonna give you a hint. Look at some of the videos that are here under yoga. Eight million subscribers for this person. Four million, eight million, 32 million views, 11 million views. This is an extremely, extremely high competitive area to get into, yoga. Now, most of us as new YouTubers would think, well, that's great, everybody's looking for yoga. The problem is there are lots of yoga videos. So how are you gonna be seen in a pool with people like this? So it's, it's almost like you're the little fish in the big pond and you're gonna get eaten alive, right? So how can we change this? So that's mistake number one. Most of us are trying to go into a niche that is highly competitive. And what we wanna do is we want to take that topic, if that's a topic you wanna to stick with. Now you could go in all kinds of directions with it, but let's stick with it because it is a highly competitive. I'm gonna go back to my first tab and instead of looking for yoga, I'm gonna go over here. I have a keyword search tool that I use. I, I do have TubeBuddy, but I'm not using that one today. Um, Cause I, if, you're, if you've never used one, this is the better one to start with because it's economical. Because when you're new, you don't like to spend money. We're, we've all been there. We're all like, I'm not spending any money. I want to make money. And you, you'll find eventually you need to spend money to make money. But let's say you're in that mindset. You're going to go to key. It's called Keywords Everywhere. You can turn it on and you can turn it off at your leisure. So if you're not looking for keywords, turn it off. Because you, let's see how many I have left. I have 87,000 left searches. Um, for like $10, I think I got 100,000 searches. And it probably went down a little bit lately because I forgot to turn it off. Um, but that's a lot. That's extremely economical, even if you just left it on all the time. So I highly recommend pay $10. It's not $10 a month. It's $10 for 100,000 searches. And this is gonna help you with some keyword search, okay? So you don't have to go out and spend 30, 40, $50 a month on something that you don't know how to use. So this pops up. Now, if I wanted to find another way to break this down, we call these long tail keywords right here. I could look for something like, um, 
How about morning yoga for beginners? Let's try that and see what happens, okay? Morning yoga for beginners. Let's see if this makes my pool of searchers smaller is what I want. Right, 368 million instead of the billions. That brought it down significantly. Let's go over here into the, the um, YouTubes. Morning yoga for beginners. Now, I'm not going to keep searching until I find the exact right one, but the point that I'm trying to make, see, this is still extremely highly competitive. Look, there's still a million, 13 million views, 8 million subscribers. You've, you've got some people that are really um, in the top here. Of course, Yoga with Adrian, she's huge. Uh, there's Yoga with Cassandra, 14 million views. Yeah, all of them are in the, the millions. So you're really in yoga going to have to get creative. I didn't realize it was that high when I picked it, so I apologize because it's really high. But pick your niche and keep playing around with the different um, ways of taking the topic, the simple topic, and making it a long tail keyword. And what you're going to do is you're going to kind of be in the niche, but maybe talking about something within the niche that nobody else is talking about. So maybe um, yoga for... Maternity, let's go there. I was just trying to think of how we could go off on a tangent um, that maybe somebody's not specializing in. Okay, so that brings it down significantly. 282,000 views. Now, there's a million here, but again, that brought it down. So um, maybe you could do yoga for lower back or yoga for headaches or just find that topic that a lot of people haven't made videos on and really make a bunch of videos in that area because you're still within the yoga niche but you're offering something that a lot of these other people are not offering and so that's what you want to do when you're a new youtuber stay away from highly targeted competitive niches which again the way you're going to break it down, if you insist on staying in that niche, then you definitely have to look for long tail keywords, okay? So speaking of long tail keywords, I want to show you mistake number two. Now I'm going to humble myself and go back to one of my first videos that I made almost two years ago. Maybe it's been about 19 months, okay? I had no idea what I was doing. This is a video that I made called affiliate marketing, okay? I'm still in that niche now, but I really need to go back and upgrade um, older videos and I'm doing it gradually. Um, I'm not going to take all of my time and go back and just sit there and do that constantly. What I've been doing is looking at videos that are within my niche that I've chosen, my keywords that I want to target, and I'm going back to those videos and fixing up the keywords. Now look at this. This is a joke. I put my name in there. I put network marketing, affiliate marketing, goals, personal. I mean, look at these. I was trying to cover everything. And I remember my mindset being like that. Like, I'm going to say everything I can that's going to cause people to, to hit this. I had no concept of when you put yourself all over the place and everything is just short words, you're really, it's hard for Google to target you. They're like, this person can't make up their mind. And that's exactly what this looks like now that I know that, but I had value and traffic and email list and keyword search and SEO and offers. And I mean, it was everything. So make sure that you're not using too many keywords that don't connect. Okay. So that's number two that you need to make sure you're not doing. So how do you fix something like that? Well, let me show you this kind of goes together, number two and three. One, there's too many of them, right? And two, they're all too short, all right? And they're not connecting, so it's kind of three. This is one I've done lately, okay? This is a video that I've made within the last month, and I knew what I was doing better. And, oh, let me go down. Where's my keywords? Right here. This is about social media posts, okay? And as you can see, I have my name together and then I have my name. I don't have my last name on there. I don't know what happened. Let's put it down here, but I have my name separated, Vanessa Berlay. So that one's short. 
And then I put Loomly, because that's what I'm talking about, Loomly. It's a whole video about them. And then it's about social media management. And I did not go crazy. Um, you can have 500 characters. I only use 262. My thought in the beginning was, oh, use them all. Get as many searches as you can. The, when I stop, I'm going to tell you how I do it. I start, I, I do have vidIQ, I have their pro account. It's like $90 a year and that's all I want with vidIQ. I use TubeBuddy as well, but I'm gonna tell you what I, how I use vidIQ right here. I start putting in my long tail keyword searches that I found from using my keyword explorer that I showed you earlier. And I start putting them in here. And as this vidIQ score goes up, I keep adding more. It's, it's really interesting. I could start adding more long tail keywords and that score will start coming down. It's almost like it's telling me you're starting to overcrowd the space, stop. And that's when I stop and I've been doing that and I'm getting more views by doing it. So don't think, I know I've watched videos. They said, well, there's 500 characters, use them. I don't anymore. I stop when the score stops going up. Um, usually, Actionable, this actionable score is usually, I, I make sure I'm at 40 because I want it to be between 40 and 50. And that's usually when I stop after I start hitting 40 or after it stops going up after I've put too many. And that's exactly what I do. So that's number two and number three. Don't use too many words and don't use a bunch of short words. Make sure they're connected and interrelated. And that's going to help you with your views. Now, if you're interested, um, I know I'm showing you this for YouTube videos. If you haven't launched a YouTube channel yet and you're just looking at it, interested and in thinking, you know, what do I need to learn? I do have a YouTube launch checklist that you can get below. And I, and if you're looking to start a brand new business, I have an ebook down there. It's kind of like a map, a guide to help you start your online business. And, and this one is specifically for affiliate marketing, but a lot of the steps are the same. Most businesses use affiliate marketing, even though that may not be your primary business. So definitely check those two free guides out and check them out and see if that'll help you with your journey as well. That is all I have today. I hope this was helpful for you. Don't make these three mistakes. They're very easy to fix. Um, put down in the chat for me if they were helpful to me. Tell me which one that you've been doing that you're ready to change. And some of you may be beyond this. You say, you know what? I've already fixed those three mistakes. I've got uh, something else that I really want to share. Go ahead and share that with the audience below. Anything that we can help people with, the more, you know, the better it is, right? All right, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next video. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell, that notification bell, so that you can be notified every time I put out my new video.